In the 1930s, a computer was a person who worked with a gear-operated desk calculator, solving problems one step at a time. Today's computers, whether they're room-sized number crunchers or tiny integrated circuit chips, perform operations automatically, step after step, with lightning speed. Many of the ideas that make modern computers possible were an outgrowth of the devices and logic developed for telephone switching. The logic controlling the relays in this old switching frame were in wide use by the late 1930s. At that time, numerous people were considering methods for automatic computing. Among them was George Stibitz of Bell Laboratories, who conceived and built the first electrical digital computer. I'm afraid we were rather ignorant of the history of computing at the time that the work on the relay computers was being done. What happened was that I was asked to look at the magnetic circuit of the telephone relay, which is the basis of much of the switching the telephone system does. And in studying the relay itself, I was uh, struck by the fact that it uh, is a binary device. And I recall that numbers could be written using uh, digits, which are either 0 or 1 instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. And it occurred to me that maybe it would be convenient to let the relay represent a binary digit uh, and the state of the relay represent the value of that digit with an open relay uh, representing 0 and the closed relay representing 1. And the device that I sketched out, I then built at home one day and, and it looked, as nearly as I can reproduce it, very much like this uh, breadboard you see here. The device which Tibbetts built was a binary adder. It consisted of two relays, two batteries, a pair of contacts, and two indicator lights. Pushing on one contact represents zero plus one. The light indicates the total, one in binary notation. Pushing the other contact represents one plus zero. Again, the light indicates the correct total, 1. Pushing both contacts represents adding 1 plus 1. The lights now showed the binary number 10, which is equivalent to the decimal number 2. So I drew up a circuit showing how it would be, uh, how we could set up a circuit that would uh, add, multiply, and divide complex numbers. The circuit was turned over to Sam Williams, uh, who is an expert on the uh, use of relays, and a complete uh, complex number calculator was finished and debugged toward the end of 1939. The whole machine was demonstrated uh, publicly in September of 1940 at a meeting of the Mathematics Society in uh, Hanover Dartmouth College. At that meeting, Stibitz gave a short talk on the use of the relay computer to calculate complex numbers. He then invited the audience to use the remote terminal to pose their own problems to the machine, which was located 250 miles away in Bell Laboratories headquarters in New York City. Using what also may have been the world's first data link, one eminent mathematician tried to get the computer to divide one by zero. The machine refused, much to the amusement of the audience. After the successful demonstration, Stibitz and his colleagues resumed their efforts to improve the machine. In the meanwhile, I was uh, I thought it would be nice to extend the uh, concepts of the complex calculator to other mathematical operations and complex numbers such as the calculation of polynomials or other mathematical functions. Now for that purpose, it would obviously be very useful to be able to write out a program or set of instructions much more elaborate than simply printing plus times or multiply on the keyboard as we did with the complex number machine. And so I suggested using a, a punch paper tape, which looks like this, and a tape transmitter, uh, which uh, was very much like the one that we have here. 
During his early design stages, Stibitz also suggested a limited use of vacuum tubes to increase the speed of his computer, an idea being considered for telephone switching. But at that time, reliability was believed to be more important than speed. And during the next several years, Bell Laboratories built six models of the relay computer. By the time Model 5 was constructed in 1945, nearly all the complex ideas of modern computers, including remote terminals, programming, built-in subroutines, internal and external memory, floating decimal point, and even error detecting schemes, had been independently developed and applied to the relay computers. By 1946, the relay computer was giving way to the less reliable but much faster vacuum tube ENIAC, built at the University of Pennsylvania. Ten years later, in 1956, Bell Laboratories had built the Tradic computer for the Air Force. In it, the vacuum tubes were replaced for the first time by another Bell Laboratories invention, the transistor. Then, finally, integrated circuits replaced discrete transistors in computers of all sizes. Still, the relay computers were so reliable that one version, the Model 5, continued in use at a university until 1964. I wish I could claim clairvoyance and uh, foresight from those days to tell what the computer was going to become and how it would develop. But I think that none of us who were working in the field at that time had any notion that the number of users would increase as they have, nor that the number of applications would be as great as they are now. Of course, in those days, the computers were very large and very expensive. Uh, with the development of microcircuitry, we have uh, computers which are far smaller, far faster, and are capable of doing anything that the early computers could do, and far more, too.